former tabloid executive David Pecker is set to return to the witness stand to continue his fourth day of testimony. Earlier today, he underwent cross-examination by Trump's defense team before facing redirect questioning by prosecutors. Pecker's been on the stand for just under 10 hours over the course of these four days. We're joined now by John Dean. He's a CNN contributor, former White House counsel uh, in the Nixon administration. He also co-wrote the book, Authoritarian Nightmare, Trump and His Followers. John, thank you so much for sharing part of your afternoon with us. Uh, so David Pecker, nearly 10 hours on the stand. What moments most stand out to you from his testimony? Well, I think he's a good witness from what I've read, and I've read uh, the transcript of the first couple of days. He's an excellent witness. When he doesn't know something, he admits it. Uh, when he's something unpleasant uh, uh, that he probably rather not address, he openly addresses it. And so he's, a, he's going to be a very credible witness, and I think the redirect today uh, cleaned up any, any uh, doubts in the jury's mind. Uh, much of the testimony so far is, is effectively setting the table for the prosecution's argument, right? We haven't heard much about Stormy Daniels and, and the arrangement that uh, the former president had with her through Michael Cohen. How do you think this uh, early stage of testimony will play into the bigger picture? It, it really does, uh, as you said, set the table. It, what it does in legal terms, it establishes the conspiracy and shows who the players were and how they operated within the conspiracy. And the Stormy Daniels is just an ongoing part of this conspiracy that the prosecutors are now laying out. And that has a lot of implications for evidence and for the way they proceed. And I think the jury will get it as the pieces get filled in now from this broad outline uh, that Pecker has given uh, through the prosecutors. Uh, one of the big questions, of course, is who is set to testify after the testimony of David Pecker wraps up. Uh, the former president said yesterday that he would testify if it's necessary. Uh, do you think his defense attorneys are, are probably trying to talk him out of that? I suspect they are. He is not a good witness. Uh, he's The few times he's been on the stand and in depositions, uh, at some length, we can see he's not a good witness. So uh, this is a little bravado for his base uh, because there are obviously political implications of great dimension for him in this trial and the others. We also haven't gotten a decision from Judge Mershon on uh, whether Trump violated the gag order. The prosecution wants him held in contempt of court for more than a dozen instances in which they say that he violated a gag order uh, that would have prevented him from uh, speaking out about witnesses in the case, about even staff uh, in, in the courtroom. What do you make of the, the delay in a decision here? Does that create ambiguity or, or is it an indication that uh, the judge wants to focus on the facts of the case and not necessarily the distractions that uh, the defendant potentially is causing on social media. Well, of course, the uh, the prosecutors have filed additional uh, violations of the gag order, and they, I think they're trying to uh, hope that the judge will be able to take this under deliberation. I think what the judge is trying to do is not distract from the progress of the trial with the gag order issue. Um, he probably is measuring that the fact that the jury, if they're following their instructions, are not becoming aware of Trump's out-of-court statements and attacks on witnesses and uh, the jury itself, but uh, rather they want to, you know, judges want to move their, their cases along because juries do get tired. And so that's, I think, his main focus. I frankly think he's going to have to say something very soon because uh, he's giving Trump too much leash uh, to just continue to violate without any sanction. Right now, we want to go to CNN's Kara Scannell, who was in court for this morning's cross-examination and then the redirect examination. Kara, take us through what you saw. 
Yeah, Boris, so Trump's attorneys started their recross to, uh, their cross-examination today, continuing the theme that they had yesterday, trying to say that a lot of what David Pecker and the National Enquirer was doing was, as he put it, standard operating procedure. He went through a number of the news articles that the Enquirer had published of T Trump's political opponents, Ben Carson, Marco Rubio, and, and Pecker agreed that they would have run these stories even if he didn't have that deal with the former president that was struck in August 2015 at Trump Tower to catch and kill any negative stories as well as to publish negative stories about his political opponents. They also tried to catch David Pecker in some inconsistencies in his testimony. David Pecker has been cooperating with prosecutors, both federal prosecutors and the district attorney's office for several years now. And so they were focusing on, remember, the testimony about a January 2017 meeting at Trump Tower that David Pecker walked into while Donald Trump was finishing up a meeting with some of uh, the F then FBI. FBI director James Comey and others. And during this meeting is when David Pecker testified that there was um, that he had a conversation with Donald Trump and Donald Trump thanked him for taking care of the doorman story and the Karen McDougal story. So Donald Trump's attorneys pressed him on notes from a previous interview he had given with investigators. And in that interview notes, um, he, he said, according to the FBI's notes, that David Pecker told them that Donald Trump did not express any gratitude. Well, David Pecker dug in on that today, saying that the FBI notes were wrong and that his testimony over the past few days is the correct, accurate testimony. Uh, so a lot of back and forth over different inconsistencies in certain agreements and trying to get David Pecker off his feet. Now, we did see during the testimony of cross-examination, David Pecker, uh, some of his answers were very quiet. One answer was so quiet it was barely audible in the courtroom when the prosecutor began their redirect of him to try to address some of the issues that the cross-examination raised. David Pecker began to grow more confident again. He was again turning to look toward the jury as he was answering those questions. And prosecutors' focus on the redirect was that that David Pecker would not have done some of these things but for the deal. He would not have entered into the agreement to pay $150,000 to Karen McDougal without the understanding that Donald Trump would have reimbursed him for it. He would not have ever allowed anybody on behalf of the candidate to get involved with amending some of these catch and kill deals. So he was trying to reset the table with David Pecker there. That is expected to continue after the lunch break. Prosecutors said they have about less than a half an hour more questions. Trump's attorney said he will have a few more on cross-examination. And then we'll move on to the next witness in this case, which they've not publicly said who that is yet. Boris? Hey, Kara Scannell, live outside the courthouse. Thank you so much. We want to go back to Wolf Blitzer in the nation's capital. Wolf? All right, Boris, thank you. I want to turn to my panel, uh, Ellie Honing. Let me start with you. Explain what the prosecution aims to do in this redirect. So the goal of redirect is to try to minimize or undo any damage done in the cross-examination. And just to give like a little visual representation, each of these has to get narrower and narrower. Your direct exam is here. Your cross-exam has to be within and usually narrower than the direct exam. Then your redirect has to be narrower than and within the cross-exam and so on down the line. I think the main points that prosecutors are trying to reinforce here as we head into redirect are, first of all, this was an intentional organized operation. It was AMI, National Enquirer, David Pecker working hand in hand with Michael Cohen and Donald Trump and the campaign in order to buy these stories, in order to protect Donald Trump's campaign prospects. That's the bottom line that they're trying to get back at. Interesting. You know, Elliot, Elliot Williams is with us as well. Before this redirect, Elliot, what did you make of the defense's cross-examination? I think the defense did what they had to do. The point of cross-examination is to score as, score as many points as possible against uh, the witness. And the main things here, in the absence of a major bombshell that they could extract, are, number one, attack the witness's credibility. Do you remember these things that you said uh, you did? And, and they pointed to a few instances where a statement he'd made didn't quite match a document, and they, and they sort of made those. Again, the, the case won't rise and fall on them, but they can dirty up the witness a little bit. Also, a, a big thing they focused on were uh, these catch and kill or at least dirt, um, at least article schemes that involved individuals other than politicians, making the case that, well, not just Donald Trump, but Arnold Schwarzenegger or Mark Wahlberg also were parties to uh, arrangements with AMI in which we, we, we engaged in the same conduct you were accusing us of having committed a crime in doing. So muddying the waters as to whether these payments were made to affect a, a campaign. They were made for all sorts of purposes, and that's what they're saying. 